Amen. All right, as we begin here, we continue our sermon series called The Book of Advents. And uh, some people are chuckling already, which is good. Like that's, although I'm seeing some smugness too. Like it's like, like, like oh, all, all these things. Like, we, uh, like we've been doing the sermon series on uh, the book of Advents. It's, it's looking at how the Bible is filled with all these Advents of God. Like all these, these times when God was coming in an unexpected uns- un- unexpected ways and all these things. And so we, we've been looking at all that. We saw that with Abraham. Like God, even though Abraham was trying to throw away the blessing of God, God kept bringing him into the newness of the life. And, and we're still part of that blessing to this day. Uh, last week, we looked at Jacob, right? Who, who even though he was in a far off land and out, outside and even was making everyone angry around him, God was still operating and giving him the promise there. And this week we're talking about the gospel of Will Ferrell and Elf and uh, and seeing what God does for him. Well, well kind of, kind of. We, we are going to talk about um, Moses and Joseph, Joseph as in Joseph and Mary, and we're going to see how that relates to Elf here. Like, who has, who has not seen Elf? A- anyone? No, like, oh, really? Really? Like, there's two, two, two or three of you? Listen, the movie is 20 years old. Well, it'll be 20 years old next year. Can you believe that? Someone was like, whoa, in the, in the back. Like, that's 20 years old next year. In 2003, this movie came out. And this is like my top tier list of Christmas movies that we watch every year. F- F- uh, Christmas Vacation is right up there. The Elf, right? Like, that, that's like the, all these movies that are just top tier Christmas story, top tier Christmas movies have to watch this every year. Elf is an amazing story a- about all this, but I, we're going in a direction that you're probably not expecting, and I think, think we'll have some fun with it. But first, we need to start by talking about Moses. And you guys are familiar with Moses. And, and one of the ideas, we talked about it in the confession a little bit, is this idea that we, we, we think the script is written, right? We think the script is written for our lives. Like Moses, he had a lot of struggle when he was a baby. Remember like, like Pharaoh wanted to kill all the firstborn Hebrews and they put him in the, put him in the, 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 in the basket in the river around all the bulrushes. Remember that? I don't know. That's the King James Version for all, all of that. I'd never heard of a bulrush before, but, but that's, the, that's the King James language for like reeds, I guess. So, so and they, and they uh, so he's, he's going around, and then he's raised up as a prince of Egypt. He's Hebrew, but he's raised up around the pharaohs. And you can think he's like, well, my life is pretty sweet right now, right? Like, it's, here I am around all the pharaohs and all these things. I can eat grapes whenever I want to. Everything, like, things are great. And, and, and yet, he starts noticing something. He realizes that he's Hebrew. He realizes he's Hebrew, and he looks out, and he sees an Egyptian mistreating one of the Hebrews. Remember, the Hebrews are like lower class. They're like the slave race there in Egypt. Like, they're lower class over there, and he goes up, and he tries to interfere with the Egyptian, and he ends up killing the Egyptian that's mistreating the Hebrews. Not good. Not good. By the way, our sound is being weird today. I don't know if you could hear it the whole time, but you're going to hear some background stuff going on through the speakers. I don't know what's going on, all right? So, so it's, that's something i got to figure out this week. I just want to let you guys know. So anyway, so, so Moses, he ends up killing this Egyptian that's mistreating these, these Hebrews. And two things happen. You would think that like his own people, like the Hebrews, are like, oh man, like let's, this guy's come to save us and stuff like that. But that's not how they're like, this guy's like power tripping completely. We want nothing to do with him. And then Pharaoh himself finds out. And he says, Moses needs to die for what he's done. And Moses has to run, has to run away. I mean, think about it. just days before he had a script made out for him. I'm going to marry some Egyptian, you know, all, all these things. And now he's on the run, run into the wilderness. And when he gets out there, he ends up finding this family out by this well. And he marries this woman, has a few kids. And he, he has become like a shepherd or a herdsman for, for um, his, bro- his uh, father-in-law's sheep. That's just Moses' life. Like, and you can imagine how he's sitting now. 
He knows what his script is. He's like, I've ruined everything. And here I am. I'm out in the middle of the wilderness watching over somebody else's sheep. I'll just die out here, right? I'll just die out here. This is, this is my script. I'll make the best of it, but here it is. You know, that's, it's weirdly similar to that of Joseph. Jo- Joseph, of Mary and Joseph fame, right? Like, imagine Joseph, and, and you can kind of see this when you're reading the Gospel of Matthew, when we're introduced to Joseph. He, you, you see, Joseph is this guy who's, he's got his life all kind of in order. He's about to marry this cute girl. Well, we think so. We, we don't know. We, we don't know. He's about to marry, marry, Mary. There we go. And, and, and everything's going well. He's a carpenter. He's got a good job. You know, he's just going to go in. He's going to have a nice little script for his life. Then all of a sudden, he finds out that his bride is pregnant. Right? Like, like it's like, ah, like, I, I, like all, he's, this guy, he's got his entire story set. And then all of a sudden, Mary's like, I'm pregnant. And oh, by the way, this is the Lord's fault. Like, don't bring the Lord into this. You know, like, like, that, that's, like, like that's, you know, I'll, I'll... And what's interesting about the Gospel of Matthew is it goes out of its way. It goes out of its way to make sure you know that, that Joseph is an honorable man. It goes out of his way because he, he could have, especially back in that day, when he found out that his bride-to-be was, was pregnant already, he could have been like, oh my goodness, like banging pots and pans about it, bringing her out to stone her and all kinds of things like that. Had full, like, he could do be, be nasty about this, and he doesn't. Notice how the Gospels say he was an honorable man and he was going to just divorce her quietly. You know, kind of in the disgrace of the whole thing. I think this is interesting, and this is just a little aside for the sermon, that there's a lot of times when, we, when someone like hurts us or sin affects us in some way, that all of a sudden we just want to raise up all the defenses and just get loud about it and all that. And I think it's interesting in the Gospel of Matthew that it says that Joseph's honorable by, no, I'm not going to bring undue shame onto other people. There's, there's enough shame in the world. I think, I think that's, a, that's an interesting, especially in a time when, man, people love to point out the sins of other people, you know? And I think the Christmas story shows this kind of a, a different way. But he just wants to divorce her quietly. It doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of Christmas cheer. And, and listen, I think, I think that's kind of similar in our own lives. Like, what situations have happened in your life that completely changed, upended the script? I think my favorite example right now is my best buddy, Mark. You know, his, he, he and his wife, they were going to have two kids, have the suburban family. He's a pastor, which is weird enough, right? And they have their first kid, everything's great. And then they have their second kid in the oven, but there ended up being two in the oven, They had twins as their second one, and their life went into madness. They had to sell their vehicle, had to get a minivan, like, like, and just, just all these things, right? Like, it's just, just utter madness happened, and I get to watch at it from a peripheral, and I get to be Uncle Chris to that, that situation, and what Uncle Chris does is I go and see the kids, and I shake them like this, and then once they're like a soda, and, and over there, I'm like, here, you take them. Like, 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 I've been feeding them sugar for two days. Enjoy, all right? Like, that's, that's what I get. That's what I get. That's what I get in my life, right? And so, and, and that, that's, and, and so, they, but what has it been in your life that you've known has been the script? Like, this is how it's going to happen. And all of a sudden, things changed. And how did you deal with it? How did you deal with it? Could you hear the singing? Could you hear the singing? And this is where I want to get into Elf, because this movie is amazing. It's amazing. So most of you have seen this, right? You, you, hopefully you all agree with me, this is one of the best movies you've ever seen, especially Christmas movies. Some of you are like, eh, you need to watch it. It's great. Th- this movie is wonderful. So this movie is about to turn 20 years old next year, and I think there's been a lot of like 
kind of resurgence of why this movie has become such a cultural touchstone. Like, why has this one, like, there's so many Christmas movies that you just forget about instantly. The Hallmark Channel is devoted to those movies. <laughs> it's a, like, like deep cut right there, right? Like that's, but the, the so many Christmas, you just, they just lose, lose favor almost instantly, right? But this is one that's, that's like a few of them that have just stood out and held their panache. And, and there's been, I've been watching a couple of documentaries about this movie as to why. And, and, and one of it is, it's just so kind of authentic. And one of the things that I loved about it, that they talked about and how they filmed this. Well, before we talk about that, for those of you who don't know the movie, this is Will Ferrell. He dresses like this the entire movie. He looks ridiculous, right? He looks like, he looks like this, and his whole idea is that, of the movie is that he is a human that was kind of adopted by Santa on accident, and he, was, and he grew up amongst elves. Didn't know he was a human until later on in life, and he decides to go see his father, and he finds out that his father is on the naughty list. Ooh, not good, right? And so he's going to save his, go save his father by putting him back on the good list, and then in the process, he saves Christmas. Sweet movie, sweet movie. So he's over there. One of the funniest things is when Buddy the Elf first gets into New York. And when he first gets into New York, all these, all these scenes of him walking around dressed like that and just interacting with all the New Yorkers. But I found out something fascinating about the, the film. Do you know how they filmed it? They filmed it guerrilla style, which means the cameras were kind of back and hidden, they weren't hidden, they were just back, and they were just filming on the New York streets with Will Ferrell walking around looking like this. All those scenes where he's in there, he's like grabbing papers from people and all that stuff, those, none of those people are actors. And my favorite one that, that was is this guy who's walking around looking like this in New York. Big beard, white with a red jumpsuit, like sweatsuit, and Will Ferrell dressed like that runs up to this guy and goes, Santa! And then like, he was like, oh, no. And that's not me. He wasn't an actor. He was just a dude in New York at Christmas dressed like this. <laughs> like, like that, and they just happened to find him. Like, that's hilarious. But I want to ask you a question for those of you who've seen this movie. If you, could, if you could sum up this movie in one phrase, in one phrase, that's there, 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 overarching the whole thing, and Buddy the Elf, Will Ferrell says it all the time. Can anyone just say it off the top of their head right now? The best way to spread Christmas cheer, singing loud for all to hear. That's our new trustee right over there. Good job. <laughs> Five star for you, <laughs> Tom. The best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. Here's a, here's a fancy graphic for that. Like if you describe this movie as one sentence, that that right there is the movie. Because the, the, way, the way the movie works out is that Buddy, as he's in New York, he ends up meeting his love interest, who, who is, is, a, is a girl named Jovi in it. And, and, she, and she ends up kind of, she's shy, but she can sing really well. And by the end of the movie, they spread this Christmas cheer by singing loud for all to hear, and she's able to get everyone to sing with her, and it gives Santa's sleigh enough Christmas spirit to be able to fly and saves Christmas. It's a Christmas movie, right? Like this, this is, this is what it is. And I'll be honest with you, when I get to this part of the movie every year, a little tear forms and I have to like brush it aside. Like what is this salty discharge? Like it's, it's great, I, lo I love this movie whenever this scene comes up. But here's the crazy thing. You read that, it's so integral to the movie. And all these documentaries about how the movie is made say this is, this is, like, this is the heart of the movie. This is why it's so successful is because it sing, stems around singing. But here's what's crazy is the original script had none of the singing stuff in it. They had already started shooting and none of the singing stuff was in it. None of it. The best way to spread Christmas cheers, to sing loud for all to hear, wasn't even in the movie. Like, that's not even in there. And what happened is, is Jovi here, um, which, oh my goodness, her name is escaping me right now. 
Zoe Deschanel, they hired her as one of her first big roles. They hired her to be the love interest of Buddy the Elf. And they, they started filming, and the director, John Favreau, who directed Iron Man too, by the way, BTW, they, um, he found out that she could sing. And not only could she sing, but her voice sounded like Doris Day. And Doris Day is like the heart of Americana Christmas, right? Like it's, it's, it's over there, her voice over there. And when he found out that she could sing like that, he went home that night and rewrote the entire script for the movie and gave us the best way to spread Christmas cheer is to sing loud for all to hear. The script was written, they had started filming, and in one night, one night, suddenly he heard the song, right? He could hear the song and that spirit of Christmas, and, it, and, it, and it, that movie crescendos in such a way that it makes me like, I have to like shield my, like, I don't want Coley making fun of me at the house, you know? Like, don't look at me, right? Like, that's, as as it brings it up to Christmas. Like it's, the script was written and suddenly they started hearing the song. Like that's the way it was for Moses. The script was written. He knew that he was gonna be stuck in Midian this whole life. Like, like just watching over somebody else's sheep. And then he looked over one day and there was a bush that was on fire. This bush on fire. Now, it's not uncommon. This is, like, this is like the Middle East. It's very dry over there. Bushes are on fire all the time over there. That's nothing new. What's crazy is that it never burned up. And he's like, I need to see why that bush isn't burning up. And the Lord saw that Moses was coming, and he, and, and he from the most like Charlton Heston's Ten Commandments movie voice possible, it's like, Moses, Moses. He's like, don't come near. The place you are standing is holy ground. Take the shoes off. Maybe we should have you guys all take your shoes off real quick. No? 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 All right. All right. We won't this time. Ne next week. Next week. The place you are standing is holy ground. And, and, and he says, Moses, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face from God. Hid his face from what was going on around there. And then God started talking about, I have seen the sufferings of my people in Egypt. I have seen them, Moses. I've seen their afflictions. And, and he's talking about how he's heard their, their, of how the Egyptians are treating them. And I am going to come down and deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land and bring them to a land of flowing with milk and honey. Like, I'm going to do this. And Moses, I'm going to have you do that for me. And Moses, like, listen, listen, this, that's not part of the script. Like, like over there, and you need to, there's three things wrong with this, God, and there's three things wrong with this. A, the Hebrews don't like me much because of what I did. They don't like me. They kind of kicked me out. The Egyptians really don't like me. It's why I'm out here right now, in case you didn't know that. And number three, I don't talk good, God. Like, that's, like that's, that's just, I, I don't. I don't do all these things. He tries to get he's so far off the script, and yet the song of the Spirit of God keeps coming out of that fire. Even though he's overwhelmed and hurt, that song still comes forward, and and. And Moses is like, I mean, how, how am I going to tell the people that, they, that, that I came from you? And God says, because I am. Say to the people of Israel, I am has sent you. I am is the great B statement. The great B that he is being from God, that he, that he is with, the, that it's that be of God, the being, the creator of everything that I am is tell him, I am has sent you. And then it's like Moses can hear the song of the creator being played out. 
and played out. And you can hear that same kind of story that happens with, with Joseph. I mean, Joseph, he's going to divorce Mary quietly, right? He considered all these things, and behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, don't fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. It's like he can hear the song that's being sung. And she will bear a son, and you will call his name Jesus. For he will save people from their sins. And Joseph wakes up from the dream, hearing the song there, that song of Christmas cheer, you could say. And he's like, all right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go forward in this. And this is our story as well. Like in, in Romans chapter 5, Paul says that Christ died for the ungodly for the sinners, for us. That He gave us a new way to look at all these things. And that we see that just as the angel told Joseph that He will save people from their sins, that even when we think that our script is written, that things that we've done, things so far that we can't get out of it anymore, that everything is just, this is how the script is, God still saves us. So, I, I don't know what in your life, I don't know what your script looks like in your life right now. Um, one of my favorite things I say to people is when, when life isn't going so well, hang on, it'll pass. And when life is going really well, hang on, it'll pass, <laughs> right? Like, those, all those new things will come up. But in the midst of those new things, we can hear the Spirit of God. We can hear that Christmas cheer that is for all to hear. So I don't know what's gonna, what the new looks like in your life. And it's not always something bad. It can be something good. But my prayer for you this Advent is that Jesus would come to you in the midst of that new story that is being told throughout your life, and that he continued to give you forgiveness and love and give you those ears to hear that Christmas cheer that's for everyone to hear. And we'll end right now, right there. Jesus, we thank you that you love us, that you're with us. Lord, give us ears to hear the, the song of your spirit the song of the Creator, the song that still stirs our hearts in all these new ways. Lord, help us to see the Advents in the Bible and those Advents that are still happening to this day. And Lord, help us to hear the music that you are playing. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So thank you so much for listening.